weekend, Solo, A Star Wars Story hits theaters, and that means we now have 10 live-action, theatrically released Star Wars movies. So today we're going to rank all 10 Star Wars movies from the worst to the best. Before I give you my ranking, go ahead and tell me down below in the comment section, how do you rank the Star Wars movies? Which ones do you love? Which ones do you hate? And which ones are right there in the middle? Totally mediocre. Let's have a nice, lively discussion that's respectful at the same time. And finally, this video is brought to you by my supporters over on Patreon. You can see their names down below. Over on my Patreon page, every week I try to do a live stream that's exclusive just for them. I post some behind the scenes content. I post audio versions of my longer videos just for them. Some exclusive videos every single month. So if you're interested in supporting my channel, go on that extra mile, please consider doing so at that link down below in the description. With that said, let's get started. Coming in in last place is episode two, Attack of the Clones. This is a movie that I find that very little of it works. It's probably the worst offender when it comes to excessive use of CGI and green screen for action sequences. And for that reason, I don't find the action sequences very exciting at all. But the real problem here is that it lacks a compelling central narrative to drive the story forward. The basic premise of the movie is that someone's trying to assassinate Padme, which leads to Anakin being assigned as her protector and Obi-Wan trying to investigate who's trying to assassinate her. The problem here is that there's no intrigue in this central mystery because essentially we already know who's behind this plot. Likewise, there's no chemistry at all between Anakin and Padme and the acting and the dialogue here are dreadful. It makes for a very slow and sometimes tedious middle act to the movie. Now there are some parts of the action sequences, especially some of the lightsaber dueling, that is a little bit exciting, and there is some emotional punch when Anakin confronts the Sand People, but otherwise this is a very mediocre at best movie. Coming in in ninth place is episode one, The Phantom Menace. Now to me, this is the best structured of the prequels. Very early on there's a clear conflict established the characters have motivations that you can understand, and the evasion and impending war give a sense of urgency from beginning to end. Likewise, I kind of love the lightsaber action inside of this movie, especially the final duel with Darth Maul. But the film also has some of the most glaring and off-putting issues of any of the movies inside of the franchise. One of the big ones is, of course, the slapstick and juvenile humor, much of it coming from Jar Jar Banks. There's fart humor in here. It just doesn't feel feel like it fits inside of a Star Wars movie. Likewise, Lucas made some very strange character choices in the movie. He makes Anakin a child, sort of makes Qui-Gon Jinn the lead character of the movie. During their middle act on Tatooine, Obi-Wan is off on a spaceship, not spending time bonding with Anakin. This means this movie can't develop the central love story between Anakin and Padme at all because that would be wildly inappropriate, and we don't get any of the friendship between Anakin and Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan established either. Likewise, the pacing of this movie is kind of all over the place. There's a bunch of really long action sequences that are followed by really long stretches with no action. The most frustrating thing about this movie is most of these problems are very fixable. Overall, I think this movie could have been great, but the execution is so bad, it's definitely not great. At number eight is episode eight, The Last Jedi. Now I greatly respect what they were going for with this movie, trying to sub expectations, doing a deconstruction of heroes, the Jedi, the Sith, and doing this character study of a broken hero that's made mistakes and is reevaluating everything that we've seen up to this point in time. The problem is in their effort to subvert my expectations, I don't think that I liked what they gave me more than I would have liked what I was expecting. Beyond that, I thought there were a number of story issues with the film. The Luke, Kylo Ren fallout sequence seemed to over simplified. The Rose and Finn storyline seemed like a very odd rabbit trail for the film that I didn't even think made sense with the way it played out in the film. And then the Poe Dameron plotline seemed to rely entirely on miscommunication and people simply not communicating for the story to progress forward in a way that I didn't find very believable. But it's also probably the best looking Star Wars movies. There's some amazing twists and turns that I did not see coming at all. And some of the action sequences in and 
and are choreographed exceptionally well, so this might be the most frustrating movie in the franchise for me. And number seven is episode three, Revenge of the Sith. Now this is a movie that I think has some exceptional elements to it. The Order 66 sequence is some of the most gut-wrenching and emotional of all of the Star Wars movies. Like Phantom Menace, I love the lightsaber action in this movie. The duel between Obi-Wan and Anakin, I think is exceptional. When it's a lightsaber duel, when it turns into a lava thing, that got a little bit weird. But when it's a lightsaber duel, I think it's the choreography is excellent. And I think this is the movie that best captures the relationship between Anakin and Obi-Wan, and you can actually see that they have some friendship and respect between the two of them. The problem with this movie is I simply do not buy the storyline that Lucas picked for how Anakin turned to the dark side and just how quickly it happens. I think that there were so many other directions they could have gone, plot lines they could have chosen that would have been more effective felt like they made more sense and had a more natural flow for the way they play out. There's also a couple elements towards the end of the movie that really don't work. In particular, Padme dying of a broken heart and Darth Vader in his uniform going, no! Which is easily the most embarrassing thing in all of these movies. a bunch of great things about this movie. It's just counterbalanced by some really bad stuff too. Coming in at number six is Solo, A Star Wars Story. What I absolutely love about this movie is that it's such a different type of story set inside of this universe that we love. It's not about the force. It's not about the rise and fall of the empire. It's about the criminal underworld and it's a heist movie and I love that. Of course, because of that, it's also the least ambitious of any of the movies inside of the Star Wars universe, it's just kind of a fun adventure, and I think it delivers on that. Now, there is some clunky storytelling at times as it's trying to span a bunch of time while telling a high story at the same time. Likewise, it has the prequel problem that we know where Han ends up later on in life, and so we also know that some of these characters aren't in his life later on. Makes it a bit predictable at times, and I also just never bought that Donald Glover and all and Aaron Reich were Lando and Han Solo. They felt like charismatic lead characters that I enjoyed seeing on screen. I just never thought of them as younger versions of the characters that I know from the original trilogy. All in all, this wasn't a movie that was trying to be the biggest and greatest Star Wars movie. It was trying to deliver a good time and it delivered a good time. At number five is Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. I think the idea of taking the opening crawl of A New Hope and turning it into a prequel is actually a very clever and smart way to make a spin-off movie. And in doing so, they probably made the most serious and war-focused of all of the Star Wars movies. I think the third act of this movie is just phenomenal. The space battles in this movie, I think are the best space battles of any movie since Return of the Jedi. And between the fate of our heroes, that excellent Darth Vader sequence, and that final cameo, this movie has one of the best final three to five minutes and most satisfying conclusions to a movie that I can think of. But this is a movie that gets better as it goes along, which means the first two thirds of the movie are pretty clunky at times, feel dragged out in certain sequences, and you can tell that big chunks of it were reshot and reworked because of some of the issues that went on during the production. These are also some of the least interesting characters in any of the Star Wars movies. But despite all of its problems, Problems. This is a movie that every single time I watch it, as it comes to a close, I feel satisfied. Coming in at number four is gonna be episode seven, The Force Awakens. For me, this is the most purely fun of all of the Star Wars movies. I think that J.J. Abrams is excellent at crafting movies that are fast paced, that have great action sequences, and have little humor sprinkled throughout. They also created a great new set of characters for this new trilogy that I think were well cast. They're charming, they're fun, they're likable. I like to see them on screen, and they work really well with our returning characters Han, Chewie, and Princess Leia. 
The big problem with this movie, of course, is that it sticks too closely to the template of A New Hope. And I don't think it would have been all bad to take a lot of inspiration from that film, but at times it feels like this movie is serving more the template than the story that they're trying to tell about the search for Luke Skywalker. In particular, the Star Killer base and the destruction of Hosni and Prime seem like they're just trying to repeat the destruction of Alderaan and, of course, the Death Star, and they need a big kind of finale in the movie but it doesn't seem like it ties back at all to the actual main plot of the movie. Also, there's some big issues with the story in that the movie doesn't really explain where the First Order came from, what the First Order is, and who's being blown up on Hosni and Prime. A lot of that's very unclear, and it's really important to the story. But at the end of the day, this is a movie that I have an absolute blast every single time that I watch it. I think that they nailed the sense of fun and adventure that you want out of a Star Wars movie, and this was a great kickoff to a new trilogy. Bringing us into the top three is gonna be episode six, Return of the Jedi. For me, this movie, it does an excellent job of closing out the original trilogy. It's got some amazing action sequences as well as some great character moments between Luke, Vader, Han, Leia, just all in all, a great, fun blockbuster. For me, I think the space battle in this movie is the greatest space battle that has ever been filmed in any movie or TV show. The throne room sequence between the Emperor, Vader, and Luke is some of my favorite stuff in all the Star Wars movies, and I've never actually really fully understood the criticism of the Ewoks. I kind of get it, but I've never had any problems with the Ewoks and have a lot of fun with that sequence in general. And getting to spend some time at Jabba's palace gets us to dive a little bit deeper into the world of Star Wars and the criminal underground and just does some nice world building. My biggest issue with the movie is that first act at Jabba's palace feels more like a prequel to this movie than it does a proper section of the story that they're telling in this movie. As this movie is about the Death Star 2 and Luke confronting Vader in this big epic battle with the Empire, the first act of the movie is really just about rescuing Han, so it's just trying to tie up the loose ends from the previous movie, so it's more of a bridge between the movies than a part of this story itself. But that doesn't really hamper my enjoyment of this movie. I think it's an absolute blast and closes things out really nicely. Our runner-up is episode four, A New Hope. The first movie in this amazing franchise is still one of the best, and that's because it's a classic fantasy story about a farm boy getting swept away on an adventure to save a princess and destroy the evil empire. 40 years later, it's easy to forget just how efficient the world building is in this movie, as there's a lot of things that you have to establish and explain about the Empire, the Force, the Rebellion, and it does it in such a concise and clear manner. And this is also the movie that introduced us to Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Princess Leia, Han Solo, C-3PO, R2-D2. This is an amazing set of characters that they gave us in this movie. These characters played by these actors are so fun and have great chemistry with one another. There's also plenty of amazing action in it. Compared to the modern big CGI fests of the current movies, it can feel a little bit quaint at times, but that's somewhat of its charm and appeal at the same time. As great as this movie is, there are a few issues with it. Early in the movie, when the droids first get to Tatooine, the movie slows down quite a bit for about 10 minutes. Likewise, the lightsaber battle between Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader, it's not great. The movie itself, however, is excellent. It holds up very well, and it's almost the best Star Wars movie, but coming in in first place is episode five, The Empire Strikes Back. This movie takes everything that I love about episode four and just does everything a little bit better. Between having a higher budget and bringing in Irvin Kirshner to direct the film, the production looks better, the special effects are better, the acting is better. Lawrence Kasdan's script is so crisp in the dialogue and provides so much emotional punch, whether you want a romance story, a coming of age story, a story about a farm boy becoming a hero, whether you want a story about a son and his father and all the complexities of that. It has betrayal, it has so many deep, rich emotions executed with excellence. The new characters added to the mix like Lando Calrissian are amazing additions to the world of Star Wars. Yoda and Lando are great addition to our already 
really amazing set of characters. And this, I think, is the best music that John Williams has composed for any of the Star Wars movies. This is the movie that gave us the Imperial March, Yoda and the Force, and so many other great little musical themes that just elevate the material. This isn't just one of the greatest sequels of all time, it's just one of the greatest movies of all time. So for me, it comes in first place. But how about you? How do you rank the Star Wars movies? Tell me down below in the comment section. Let's have a nice, lively, yet respectful conversation. And if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos. Hey, like the one you're watching right now. But the key thing is I don't wanna just talk about movies. I wanna talk about movies with you. So join me down in the comment section. Let's have a lively, respectful conversation. That respectful one is a key piece in all of this. And as always, thank you for watching.